evening, guys. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? I'm gonna wait a few more moments. Can you guys hear me all right? thing I wanted to say thank you for everybody for supporting me um, hopefully I don't have too many problems with this since it's my first live stream and I kind of don't know what I'm doing with it <laughs> happy birthday good duck Basically, um, I want to know if what you guys would like to learn from me. I mean, I'm not—I'm certainly not the foremost expert when it comes to YouTubing. I've only been doing this for six months, but I do apply um, things that I've learned and try to make a good go at it anyway. So, what I would like to do is maybe. See a few of you guys that ha have channels of your own. Um, maybe check out your channels, give you a little bit of advice of what I have. If that's all right with you guys. Uh, good duck, you just told him. <laughs> There's not too many people watching right now, so. <laughs> so for, first and foremost, I want to talk about equipment. Um, equipment is something that you know we all want the best equipment. I mean, I don't, I don't have. The best cameras. I don't. I have a GoPro 2018. That's all I have for using. You know, my do my POV footage. I use my phone with uh, specific apps so I can have more advanced settings. Let's see what the apps call here. It's called Filmic Pro. I'll hold it up to the camera here, see. I'll type it in the, the chat as well. The nice thing about that app is it allows you to, to choose your frame rate, which is a big help, especially for those of us that like to film in 24 frames per second, which I would recommend if you're doing any type of motion video just because it adds more of a sense of speed when you do um, frame rates like 60 frames per second it does look more realistic and but it's not as it doesn't portray a sense of speed as well as 24 frames per second does The mountain bikes I have in the background, I have uh, the Huffy Scout, which is one I just did the review on. It's kind of torn apart right now. It doesn't have a bottom bracket or cranks in it. Behind it, I think I got the Diamondback that we've all come to love. And behind that is the Specialized Rock Hopper, which I started this whole thing on. And, and then, then my, my two kids' kids bikes. I'll, I'll switch, switch the camera, camera and show, show you theirs. That. 
Hey, hey old crank, crank, what's going on? on? I don't edit from my phone. I like to edit basically on a Mac. And that's just because that's what I'm comfortable with. For the past, all my videos have been edited with iMovie. Unfortunately, I don't. I have Adobe Premiere. I just don't know it as well as I know iMovie. Um, I can do a lot of more advanced stuff in iMovie than I can with Premiere just because it's too advanced. But... Most, Most of my, my editing will be done with that. that. Now, I am waiting, waiting on my new editing machine because something happened with my old ones. So, so my new ones should be arriving in the next few few days. So it should it should be a lot nicer machine. It actually has Final Cut on it, so I'm going to be learning that. And Final Cut's not too much of a uh, a jump from iMovie. It just it just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried, tried the Wondershare, Wondershare uh, the trial of it. It's, it's a little... little uh, my, my problem is, with me, is, is I, I, I stick with what I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I've, I've, I've tried, tried, um, what's, what's the, the other, other one? one? I, can't I can't think, think of it right now. now. There's, there's another, there's, there's a free one out there. there. I, I can't, can't think of the name. But I used that as well, and it just it just didn't... There's just, just too much to learn, learn in it. Yeah, let, let me check, check out some of the message here. here. Hey, hey Sam, Sam, Zen, Zen Master, Master, what's going on? on? Drew Cannon, Cannon. I, I, I do watch Kev Central. Central. I am a big fan of his. That's, That's kind of what led me to the, 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 the uh, Walmart, Walmart mountain bikes. bikes. I've always had a Play some, yeah, yeah DaVinci Da Vinci Resolve, Resolve whoever's old crank. crank. Thank, Thank you. you. Intro evolution, evolution, I still need to send you out some stickers. stickers. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm terrible. terrible. <laughs> I, I still, still need to send Robert with biker his shirt and hat. I'm just terrible at going to the post office and sending and stuff out. out. And I, I, I know who Fabio Wimber is. I, don't, don't know him personally. personally. I wish I knew him personally. That would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna, gonna switch, switch the final, final cut, cut just because, because I I'm starting, starting to get to the point where I need a little bit more advanced editing features, features just for what I'm doing. doing. I need, I need more, more color, color correction. correction. Uh, I'm for, for my, my audio. audio just, just recently, recently I've, I've, I've been compressing and normalizing my audio with with, with Audacity. Audacity. That's, That's mainly what I what, what I use. Fabio's your uncle. Well, well put in a good word. word. Tell, Tell him the next time he's in the state, state stop in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And Toku One, one is a nice bike. Uh, I'm jealous, jealous of, of you, <laughs> of the people with you that, that have nice bikes. bikes. So, so basically, basically, YouTube. YouTube uh, my, my main, main thing. thing is I spend, spend a lot of time, time on figuring out what I'm going to do with the thumbnail. thumbnail. you, you got to think of it, you know, to rise above the noise of you, every, everybody else in YouTube. you got one chance and your thumbnail is it. So you got to, you know, you got to learn how to use any sort of photo editing software. I've, I've used... Right, right now, now I'm using Photoshop, Photoshop but, but I've, I've used GIMP, GIMP in the past. past. I've, I've tried, tried. I tried to use GIMP the other, other day when I was having troubles with my machine, machine and it just wasn't working, working out for me. me. So, so that, that is one of the key things with YouTube. Is your, I, 
thumbnail, I can't stress that enough. If you have a good thumbnail, you'll at least get people to click on your video. And that is by far the most important thing. I try to, you know, hand, like actually design my thumbnail rather than just taking a screenshot of, of my ride. Um, sometimes I'll do it, but as you can see with my, my I would say past 20 videos, they all have kind of the sim, sim, a similar style, which uh, that's another thing. You, you, you know, you want to kind of figure out, you know, what style kind of works with you. I kind of stick with the same font. I stick with the basically the same resolution for the thumbnail itself. Uh, same color schemes. And you're right, old crank. It's, it's always about attracting the potential viewer. Hey, Micah. Because if you can't, I mean, yeah, I, I love you guys that are subscribers. But we want, we want um, more, more people to join our YouTube that aren't subscribers. And that's how you're going to hook them is with your thumbnail. Good duck, I am, I think I'm 37. I always have trouble with this. I think I'm 37. I may be 38. My wife, I, my wife always has to tell me. I always forget. I just had a birthday at the beginning of March. But, yeah, I mean, thumbnail is everything. The next thing, of course, is audio. I've had problems with audio. Usually, uh, lately, I've been using uh, voiceover, mainly because... The gimbal that I use puts a lot of gimbal noise in my my first person videos. So that that caused I mean I've tried to mask over it with sometimes, but it's just been it's been a fight that I've been continuing to fight. Um and speaking of gimbal, I don't use an Evo gimbal. I just I'm not spending two hundred bucks on a gimbal. On, that might break. As much as I want a Hero 7, I just can't afford one. But the gimbal I use is actually a smartphone gimbal, and I basically kind of use a handlebar mount to mount it on my chest, which is kind of a... Are you hearing an echo? Work course? I may have to mute my internal mic here. Okay, let me hold on one moment. Try to fix that for you. better for you guys let me know awesome sorry about that I'm still learning the OBS software so what um Someone asked what kind of grips I have on my bike. Hey, Backwoods Biker. And Fareed. And work, Workhorse. Yes, the Hero 4 is perfect for the sound. Um, the, 20, the, the GoPro 2018 was kind of a limited run. Basically what it was was a downgraded, a firmware downgraded Hero 5. But I, I think it has a lot better audio than the hero 5 and i actually you can hack the firmware to make it a hero 5 hopefully gopro doesn't watch this 
<laughs> but I'm I'm actually using that for for all my first person shots. Um, I also use that for some of my third person shots. But like I was saying, I use the phone for most of the the third person shots with the Seth Spike Hack using your tool as a as a stand for your phone. And then that that uh, software. That software is amazing for for your phone. If if you don't have it, I r recommend you get it. I bought it a long time ago before, heck, before it, even I had a YouTube glimmer in my mind, and I don't even remember how much it cost. It might it might have been ten bucks, but it's definitely worth it because you can you know change the color, uh, resolution, whatever you want, and I I usually match it with my GoPro settings. And try. I mean, and it and it does a really good, good job of filming and everything. My bike check video was all filmed with that app. So if you guys want to see how that looks, just a full video of that. That's the video of mine that you want to check out. And oh, well, hey Drew, how's it going? I hope the stream's going good. I got 13 of you guys up on here. But anyway, back to the grips. On this bike, it still has its stock Walmart grips. On the Diamondback, the Diamondback has some cheapo Amazon grips that were like five or 10 bucks. Any big rides, lanes? All planned. <laughs> um, I hope so. I'm in talks with a few people, um, a few other YouTubers. We'll see what happens with that. You may see something, you may not. Uh, I hope. I hope I get in touch with a few more of them. My favorite mountain biking channel. Hmm. That's a rough one. I can't think of really who's my favorite. I would probably have to say either oh man there's just so many I really don't have a favor that's the problem see I don't watch too much GMBN I, li I like the ch I like the channel but I, I don't watch it as, as much as I should Yeah, I'm. I think I'm with you there, old crank. I I don't. I don't think I can pick out a favorite. Cause a biker. I mean, I like. I like his live streams. I think he does the best live streams. Mo and Hannah with Awesome MTV. Those two are. Those two are great. Um. Of course, Seth. Seth just is the master of voiceover and and pretty much everything YouTube when it comes to mountain biking. BKXC, Brian with BKXC. He's probably one of the best first person um, shooters there are. First person. Yeah, the OG. Um, of course, Alex with the single track sampler. His his filming game has really stepped up recently. I thought like his color correction and everything in his videos, the Lone Ranger. Man, there's just so many. I yeah, I, I seriously can't. Of course, those are all the bigger ones. Yeah, IFHT it is funny. Well, that's a good question, Backwoods. 
See, I ha I have a family, so the family would have to go with me on a road trip up the East Coast. Oh, good trails. You're in Ot Ontario. You should hook up with um, Tugi Hauser. He's up there in Ontario. He's another good channel if you ha haven't followed him. Um, he's right at the around the 2,000 subscriber mark. So Blazons ask, how did I get so many subscribers? Well, that's an interesting story. So... When I first started this thing, my main thing was to lose weight. And that's been very good. I'm down, I think, 82 pounds right now. But the key thing with YouTube, besides the trailer, I mean, besides the thumbnail, is your trailer. So in your trailer, you want to explain basically what you're doing on YouTube, why you're doing it, and what makes you different than all the other people on YouTube that are doing, that are in your same niche. So, okay, you wanna be a mountain bike YouTuber. Okay, that's our, our main niche. Well, I take it one step further where, okay, I'm losing weight as well. And then I take it another step further. Well, here, here's a guy that he basically lost his whole family, you know, worked hard, got remarried, has kids, and then, you know, tries to come from behind and make his life more positive. So that helped, but then I um, basically saw another YouTube video. If you guys, there's a few basically YouTube creators that basically just tell you on how to market yourself on YouTube and how to you know make your videos better. One of them is, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Nick Nimmin. He is basically just videos on how to you know make your videos better and everything so on one of his videos he mentioned how uh, another creator used google ads to target sub, um, tar target you know viewers so I, I looked into it i signed up for google ads and started looking through it and as i'm looking through it um course google tr trying to get you hooked in says oh well if you spend fifty dollars you know we'll give you a hundred dollars you know free advertising so i was like oh what's what the heck might as well try it out so the way google ads works it's is it's the only time you really pay is when someone watches your ad fully and unfortunately i had a very successful ad I know probably some of you have seen it when it was on. I know Sam, went, um, the mountain bike Zen master, he he saw it because I saw him comment on it a long time ago, and he asked me how I how I did it. Hey, Z Dirt Life, how you healing? Um, but it just you know I I figured hey I'll, I'll do a dollar a day. So I did a dollar a day and it was that first day, I think I picked up, you know, 15 subscribers. And I, I think at that time I was right around the, the 50 or 60 subscriber area mark. And then I just started growing from there. So I said, Hey, what the heck? I'll do $10 a day. You know, Google's giving me, you know, a hundred free dollars. Might as well try it out. And I'll actually bring up my my dashboard here in YouTube, and you guys can see that. Oh, thanks, Google. And 
I'll show you basically you, you can stri you can definitely tell where where it picked up go to my analytics here and that's another thing if you guys aren't living in your analytics if you if you want to do this and be a little bit more successful at it you need to live in your analytics because that is the life blood of YouTube okay let me bring this screen up here Okay. So right here, some of my analytics. So as you can tell, I mean, I do have a lot of subscribers. This is my my watch time for the year so far. I started the channel at the beginning of October. Let me bring up the, the stream chat here again. As soon as I can find my... Oh, here. Okay. So basically, right around, yeah, it was right around December, the middle of December, that I, I just said, hey, might as well try it out just raising and that's when well that's when Google gave me the the free $50 or $100 credit so I said might as well try it there and then that's when it started growing like crazy I think that first day I gained 50 60 subscribers if I would have like continued down that road it uh, Social Blade was <laughs> telling me because I think at the the tip top of it I was make I was gaining probably I forget how many subscribers but it was like a hundred subscribers every four days or so and by um then it was just a little bit too much too much money because it was too successful of a video um and that's another thing I'll show you guys. So we'll go to my videos here. As soon as they load. And we'll go up to the actual trailer video. So this is what the ad was. Was my trailer video. I'll go to the analytics of it. Good audience retention in YouTube. Is usually you want to try to keep your audience retention right around 50% 50 to 60% and this has an amazing audience retention and that's why I mean my trailers only it's less than a minute long you want to make your trailer less than a minute long or somewhere around there just because you want to hook somebody you want to tell them what, why you're doing it and what you know what you're doing it for so and that's how people got hooked and as you can see here, the first five seconds of it, of course, because it was a skippable ad, it was, you know, had 96% retention. But then, you know, people continue watching it because what I did is I actually targeted the ad for, for mountain biking channels, not road biking, mountain biking. So somehow I kind of figured out the Google, the Google... I guess the way the ads get displayed the channels and I think at at the time I think I was getting played somewhere around 40 to 50 times a day on Seth's channel and that's how I actually gained a lot of subscribers and Deuce yeah I'm trying to keep it clean um and it's me I'm trying to keep it clean because now sometimes I do slip out a you know a darn and stuff like that but 
you got to think of it this way. If you want to try to be successful at this and be more desirable to advertisers and companies, keep yourself clean. And that's what I want. I, I would love to do this this full time. I mean, because it is it is a lot of work as as all you guys know. But the trailers trailers second to the thumbnail, I think, because that's what someone sees when they're going to go to your channel. Exactly, Deuce, and that's that's one of the main. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this whole YouTube thing, um, I don't want to become famous. That's, I, I don't at all. It's for my kids. When I lost my wife 10 years ago, there really isn't much of her left in, you know, the digital age that I can go back and say, hey, you know, this was her, um, but this, I mean, it's probably always going to be out there. So my kids can go back when, you know, 70 years from now and see, hey, this is what, you know, your grandfather was doing way back when. And I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that's available to them because it's kind of chronicling my, my journey tr to try to get healthy. Yes, the dolphin noise. <laughs> and if you actually watch my um, New Year's Day video, my outtakes, I do cut out a lot of <laughs> stuff. Um, that was probably one of my more more extreme videos when it came to language, just because I am terrible at at speaking. Um, that I've I have a stutter and everything. So I try to try to you know do my best to to keep it real and everything. So any of you guys want to like want want to do like a a channel review and like I can check out your channel. Hey Henry, how's it going? Yeah, no worries about being late. XC Sam, welcome. And editing does come in handy. How was Bentonville, Sam? I haven't checked out your vi videos yet. Now, all you guys, I I tr basically try to subscribe to all you guys. I mean, I I like seeing what what all you are doing, but as you know. There's so many of us. It's it's hard to keep track on you know what everyone's doing, and and that's another thing. You know, if you if someone comments on your your video and actually makes you know a heartfelt comment, I try to respond to everybody. My my wife knows. You know, I'm sitting like the fir first. 24 48 hours after I release a video I'm you know sitting there on my phone as as much as she hates it you know responding to people because you got to think of it this way these people are taking time out of their lives to watch your video and yeah we, we are, we're not basically not getting paid anything for it but they, they're taking valuable time to actually watch you and especially if they're watch, I mean, you don't know if they're watching the whole thing, but they're taking their time anyway to watch you and 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 see what see what you're doing. But I try to always um, reply to everybody. If I don't reply to you, it's usually because the app messes up and it does mess up quite frequently. So I try to go through and and go um, check out my my videos a few days after they're released, especially if it's a more popular one, and then answer what you have to say. 
Drew's and Thews. What see what you have to do in your video, you actually have to tell people to comment. You know, try to work that in on, on a script if you're doing a voiceover. Lately I've been doing a lot of voiceovers because of the audio issues that I was explaining earlier. But it also gives me the chance to write out a script. You know, I usually most of my my scripts are, you know, two, three, almost three pages long sometimes. Um, and I help, I don't follow it exactly. I, tr I try to just because of my stutter and everything. But even then, I mean, I'm usually, good trails, it is my first live stream, by the way. Um, but I, I usually try to, you know, follow the script, most of what it says and everything, because I, if I get off topic, I, I, you know, I can go on a tangent sometimes. But you gotta, basically when you're first doing your video, most time people are only gonna watch the first half of the video. Then, so in that first half, try to do that's why in a lot of my newer videos, you'll see a little pop-up that says, or, you know, that has the subscribe and then, hey, leave a comment, you know, what, what you think of the Huffy or what you think of this. Do that in the first, I would say, minute, two minutes of your video. And that's your call to action for people to actually write in your video. Because you, I mean, you want, you want actually, yeah, and you're right, Deuce, writing is the, the part of the tough, the toughest part of this. If, I wish I could, um, write better. <laughs> and I'm sure my English teacher, Mrs. Lenhart, would, would be cussing me out with the way I'm writing, but I think I do a halfway decent job with my, my storytelling. And that's another thing. You want to actually tell a story. You know, you just don't want to go out there and say, hey, this is this is Bentonville. You know, no offense to you, Sam, but I haven't seen your Bentonville video yet. But try to make it a story. Like Seth, Seth is an amazing storyteller. Um, he's he's awesome. Yeah, the grammar police are pretty bad. <laughs> and backwoods, I'm not. I uh, I actually have moderators. I'm gonna save that spot for a certain level of patreons. No offense to you, but Jody is my f first official Patreon. Thanks, Jody, for that. By the way. And you know you're going to be a critic of yourself. So think of it this way. I, I hate watching myself no matter what, but I watch my videos, you know, a few times the whole way through, especially when I'm done with it, see if I missed anything or if something needs edited. Then once, once I watch that video, you know, and I, and I figure out what I'm going to do right in the, in the description, I'll start, I'll start, you know, working on the thumbnail. And the thumbnail is the better part of a day designing any as well. So, I mean, you need to I would I mean, I wish I had more time. But it's you, know, you, you just kind of have to make time for it. So, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna criticize yourself all the time. It's 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 a hard, hard thing to do. Old crank, that is the hardest part for me. I know hearing my voice. My wife watches me when I first release a video, and <laughs> I oh actually when anybody watches me and when I'm in the same room, I I get kind of embarrassed because I'm a I'm a little bit of a shy person, so. 
I don't mind when they're when I'm out of the room, but it's just when I'm in the room that it bother it bothers me a lot. <laughs> so I try I try it's not that I'm embarrassed about what I'm making. It's just that I just don't like, you know, hear my hear myself. So don't I mean you're gonna you're gonna criticize yourself. In backwoods I am going single speed on the bike. The bike already has the single speed free will on it. And it's not so much a jump bike because I don't really, tr I shouldn't say I don't trust it because I do because I think the frame is pretty sturdy. I'm just going to um, mainly use it as a pump track bike because we have the w one really nice pump track and uh, the city, my city is talking about building another pump track here shortly. So I'm not very good at jumping <laughs> if you've seen any of my videos. I'm actually pretty terrible about it. So I try to. And you're right. Oh, it, pump tracks are an amazing workout. About three laps in a pump track and I'm dead. So I am. Going to switch the view here. <laughs> you're right you're right dirt life it will probably back before it goes <laughs> but you know what <laughs> at least i have fun doing it <laughs> I, I just you know wanted to do something different i mean i know that's kind of kev central's thing of you know doing videos on walmart bikes and seeing seeing if there's a good one out there. Um, I just saw the geometry of this thing. And I was, you know, I just thought, wow, you know, I don't have to spend a whole bunch on a, a dirt jumper because dirt jumpers are expensive no matter if they're used or not. And then I sent it to the wifey and she said, sure, go for it. I always lose an inch off my bike when I sit on that, the Diamondback. <laughs> my sag is like 50% because I'm a little heavy for it. <laughs> the dime, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with the Diamondback though. I mean, it's not, it's not the greatest, the greatest bike, but it certainly, you know, did me, does me well. And I like the wrap on it. Seems like people like the wrap on it. So hopefully it keeps on, you know, doing its job. So I certainly do like it a lot. I mean, everybody wants a, a newer bike and yeah, I, eventually I, I will get to a, a point where it's a little bit too much what I'm doing. Um, even the one trail that I ride that's south of me, um, Moraine State Park, it's got some pretty nasty, you know, boulders and and rock gardens. It's a little much for the recoil. Yeah, I I agree with you, Az. It's it's way out of reach. I mean, I and it's not even so much out of reach. When you're talking fifteen hundred dollars, I mean that is a lot of money, especially when you have two two kids that are you know that you're putting in preschool and you know you got full time job that in bills and everything else that. It's fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. It's not that I don't have it, it's just that there's other priorities in life. As with everything. 
But, you know, even with the the Diamondback, I mean, I just do with it what I can. I'm, the the wrap itself, it I mean, I, I basically have a, a new looking bike. And every time I take it out, it gets complimented. It cost me, I think, what, 60 bucks? I mean, yeah, it was a crap ton of time, but in a lot of work, work, just putting it all, taking it all apart and then putting it back together. But it's, it was a, it was a fun little project. I wish I had a little bit better video of it. I think I, the video would do a little bit better, but it, unfortunately it was so much time that, and I only have one GoPro. <laughs> I only had the one camera angle, so. <laughs> You're right, Deuce. <laughs> Fuse is cheaper than a heart attack. <laughs> and when I had my anxiety attack, you know, what was it, two months ago now? <laughs> that was a scary experience. <laughs> and the Fuse is a great bike. I mean, I I, I like the Fuse. I, I mean, I'm, I've always been partial to Specialized for the longest time. I actually like um, the Ross. The Roscoe is one of my favorites now, and of course, a lot of the boutique hardtails like the RSD Middle Child and, and Gorilla Gravities. Um, I forget what their hardtail is called. But the the Diamondback, I mean, it's a small frame. I'm I'm definitely too tall for it, but the price was right, so I I had to jump on it. And yes, Henry, I would think about doing a cyclocross race. I would do horrible in it, but <laughs> I definitely want to. I definitely want to do it. And you're right. It is the pedal head. Thanks. The pedal head I, I love. Um, of course, the... I can't think of Crow Mags. Hardtails now. But I like those ones too, of course, because they're chromo, chromo. And I'm a big fan of steel bikes. I love steel bikes with a passion. If you never rode a steel bike, it's amazing. I have my original one back here on the floor. This is my first bike shop bike, which will probably get a rebuild here eventually. The Schwinn Moab. It's a chromo frame. And this was pre-Pacific Schwinn, so it's actually a, a good frame. Who knows, maybe I'll make a gravel bike out of that. I'm just not a big fan big um fan of drop bars just too uncomfortable for me and i don't know if they make you know wider drop bars i i actually n never been on a good drop bar bike so they might actually make wider drop bar bikes nice backwoods i, I think they still make the moab there's like a schwinn signature series or something and it actually looks halfway decent Nice job, Jim. Yeah, I mean, I, there's not too many races in my area. I think there's some down near Pittsburgh. I'm basically right in between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Like, smack dab, dead in the middle. Um, I would like to go up to Rays one day and check that out. I was hoping... <laughs> I wish I knew when Bobo was up there, I would have went up there and it definitely looks like a fun place. And someone that commented on my video not too long ago actually works up there.
Jason, yeah, drop bars does do suck when you have a belly. And I have a belly, unfortunately. <laughs> and that was another thing, you know, all the all the bikers, I, I mean, all the mountain bikers that I see on there right now, I, I mean, you have Seth, he's he's a pretty, pretty um, small guy. And then you have, you know, all these thin guys. The only one that I really seen that kind of had the same body type as, as me was, you know, Robert with, with the biker channel. And he was a big inspiration for me to start my channel. Cause I say, Hey, this guy's doing it. I might, I might as well start doing it. And I always kind of wanted to do something on YouTube. I just never really figured out what I wanted to do. And then July of, yeah, you did ride with Seth. <laughs> I know he definitely does. Sure, I I can't believe I I I don't know how old Seth is, but I'm scared to shred, <laughs> shred like that. <laughs> I'm scared of any anything you know crazy. <laughs> I mean my my jump line at my local park scares scares the crap out of me. <laughs> I was so happy when I actually, you know, hit the the one big jump with some speed and But yeah, I mean it was June of last year that I started on my weight loss journey. Now that 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 was actually before I even started thinking about going doing some mountain biking. And back then, I actually have a picture on my in front of my phone here. I'll pull it up here. I don't know if it will show up on the camera or not. There might be too much glare off the light here. But the. Uh, You can kind of see me there with my little ones and my wife. But I was right around, pretty close to 400 pounds there. So it was, uh, we started to make a change and that was uh, a lot of work. Basically working out every night. And, and it was, it was a lot, a lot of hard work eating eating right I went on uh, Weight Watchers I actually just stopped Weight Watchers after you know almost a year and the only reason why I stopped is because my work wasn't paying for it anymore but yeah I'm I'm hoping to keep keep the weight loss up I mean it's a lot slower recently just because of the the weather and everything but unlike a lot of people i know sam got out there in the snow um and sam with zen master he got out there in the so snow as well and as, as you guys saw with my videos i i was trying to get out there but yeah i mean i i tried to ride all, at least once a week and jim i actually have I'm terrible at bunny hops. That's another reason why I bought this thing, just so I can learn bunny hops. There's a guy. Um, he's he's local to me. I, I actually went to high school with his brother. He's pretty awesome at jumping. Uh, his and he has a tattoo par parlor. But yeah, he he loves to jump. So hopefully, I can get to ride with him and. He can show me some things because I I'm terrible at bunny hopping and manuals. But the the bunny hops I can do an English bunny hop all day long, but American bunny hops my my brain just I don't know what it is I just can't get get the right form down. I I've tried to watch you know Seth's video daily mountain bike rider video. <laughs> And day, daily mountain bike rider. If you guys have, 
aren't subscribed to him, he's awesome. I mean, he's he's one of my favorite guys to watch. Just because he's he's more of a clean person too to listen to on on YouTube. I mean, he's he's he seems to be growing pretty fast. Of course, I th he's kind of um, always on with Paul the Punter as well. So he's another one I like. But yeah, I'm, I I hope to. Yeah, Ken, I, I'm actually trying to. I've I've been trying to tape myself, you know, doing bunny hops. But every time I set up the camera, I kept falling over. And um, I actually haven't done it since Seth's video of the the multi tool hack. That's been kind of life changing with my third person shots. <laughs> Oh, the strength's not the problem. I definitely have strength. <laughs> it's just my my brain can't just get over the motion. That's that's the biggest problem. Like I I have trouble staying in the manual too. That's not, that's another thing that's hard for me. So and that's chain stay on the the Diamondbacks like four foot long, so it makes manualing more difficult. <laughs> You're right, Ken. It's very, very far down on the priority list. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, that's that's another thing. I mean, YouTube takes up a ton of your time. If <laughs> I mean, it takes up probably not as much time lately, just because I've had a lot more family stuff going on lately, but it takes up a lot of your time. And another thing, guys, if you if you need when you watch other people's videos, make sure you like comment on on there and actually you know comment something nice. Don't say oh nice video, because that's gonna get some of these bigger creators to actually see you know your comment and actually see you know what you're doing because it it only takes one click for them on your name to go over to your channel if your channel is not set up with your trailer and your thumbnails then they're just gonna oh well this this guy's just starting out let me get off his channel so that's another thing I mean you got you got to think of it that way you, you put some heart and you actually watch their video the whole way through you know see what they're doing you know and actually comment something worthwhile rather than just nice video it it's a big I mean it, just just think of it you know someone commented on your video you're gonna want to respond to them right away now of course when when you know you get to Seth's level and you're getting two thousand three thousand comments a day I mean it's kind of impossible then but he's going to see those people that that actually put some thought into their responses and and actually going to take a look at your comment. Now he might not click on your name. He might not even respond to you, but he at least looked at your comment. I mean, I look at everybody's comment. So I can't, I don't know if that will happen if I ever get to Seth's point, which I doubt I will. <laughs> I, I actually hope and I don't because Seth's at the point right now. I mean, he's so recognizable. I mean, that video of him at Sea Otter was kind of funny when him, him and Blake were trying to hide from fans. But that's, that's what you got to think. I mean, these guys that are bigger, I mean, all it takes is one share on their their community feed and basically you're growing up over your channel is growing overnight a uh, perfect example of that i mean backyard trail builds he i mean he's an awesome creator creates his own music uh does all of his videos him and his girl are always you know riding together and you know he does awesome trail work and you know trail signs too he he does amazing work 
and his filming style is awesome. So you take a guy like that, and then you know Seth sees the video, he shares it shares it on his channel. He basically grew overnight like four thousand subscribers. And you, everything in YouTube is kind of exponential. So the requirement to be modernized in YouTube is a thousand subscribers, which I have, and four thousand watch hours, which is two hundred forty thousand watch minutes. That's a long time when you think about it. But when you take into account people that are that watch, say. What say take six thousand people watch just two minutes of your video. I mean that's twelve twelve thousand minutes right there. And it's 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 all exponential when you think about it. I mean when I when I hit a thousand, I'm probably usually the first day I'm getting right around a hundred to two hundred views. And views are not what matters on YouTube. Watch time and click-through rate is everything. So that is another thing. Views do not matter. Watch time and click-through rate. If you want to have a successful video on YouTube, watch time and click-through rate. If you have a high watch, watched, you know, watch viewer retention and then a high click-through rate YouTube is gonna push your video more simple as that doesn't matter if you're a small creator doesn't matter if you're a big creator those are the those are the two key things views do not matter you could have a million views on a video but if you're only having a second of watch time YouTube is not gonna push that click-through rate Oh, let me show you something, Ken. Since you are a fellow creator too. Let me switch my camera here. So what I was talking about with... So here is my audience retention on this video. So that's 85.8% click-through rate this is one of the most important features on YouTube right here is your reach for viewers so pretty much half of, half of all videos are somewhere in between the I want to say I, I, I think YouTube actually has a thing right here up the help there so another thing you guys if, if you haven't been through the YouTube Academy watch those videos Academy I don't know why I was gonna say it like that. but yeah so half of them are between 2% and 10% so this one is in in that half so so f impressions impressions what this is one of your more important areas of your one of your videos so impressions are actually the thumbnail being showed to your viewers so that can be on a watch page when it's on the side here I don't know how my camera is but it could be on the watch page so you're watching the video here your all the other videos are here if your video shows up in that list that's an imp impression so that's what counts towards this this metric so when someone sees your impression that's going to show up on here now when they click on it that's a click-through rate so my click-through rate is seven percent on this videos so it's going to tell them tell them my views from impressions so that's 283. my average view duration is 40 seconds out of a 58 second video that's very impressive impressive so my my watch time from this is I mean it's in this this video gets recommended a lot 
Now, a lot of people don't share, don't have their um, trailer as a public video. I said I might as well leave it as a public video. Didn't really care too much about that. Um, and that's really up to you if you if you want to do that or not. Now let's take the newest video of the Huffy. Usually videos in the one to two week, like when they're one to two weeks old, are gonna have a higher click through rate because they're a new video. New videos attract more viewers. YouTube's always gonna push new content to its viewers because viewers want new content. I mean, think of it like, you know, a TV show. You always want the new new episode. But, and that's how you're gonna hook new people as well. You hook the new people, they're gonna click on your new video, say they like it. Then, that's when you hook them, they're gonna watch your old videos. That's when you start to build up your, your watch time. So, we're gonna look at the Huffy Scout review here. Let's go analytic analytics on that. So this one has been doing pretty good. I mean, it has a pretty good watch time, fifty-four point nine percent. Um, as you can see, the the real time activity, seventy views in the past forty-eight hours. This was one of my most disliked videos, by the way. I guess people you. You guys don't like the Walmart bikes <laughs> or you just don't like me. So this one has a 14.2% click through rate, which is high, even for a video that's that's just been released. Um, out of the 2.3 2 thousand impressions it has, it has one, one and a half thousand minutes of watch time. So it's pretty pretty decent. This is one of my more successful videos. Thanks, YouTube. Go away. I'm trying to do a live stream. Thanks a lot for that one. And now my start menu is bugging you guys. Thanks. Wonderful. The joys of live YouTubing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You see me back? Not sure what happened there but anyway um so let me let me go look at the whole channel as the channel as a whole and like I said if you're not living in your analytics and you want to be successful at the platform you got to start studying this start learning what it means some of those channels that I was talking about, Nick Nimmin's one of them. Um, Brian G. Johnson is another one. They they go into the more analytics side of this. They're going to show you how to read these analytics better. And when you read them better, you're going to – and you apply basically what, what they're saying, you're going to you know do, do your video better. And the key thing is is you, you also want to see where, where people are dropping off. So, and let me go back to videos real quick. We'll, we'll actually like this take care of your trail video. I don't want to be too long winded in on this because I, I, I only really did want to do this an hour, but now I'm starting to get into the nitty gritty. Let me go back to analytics here. So with your audience retention, if you go to see more, it's going to show you like where where your you know viewers are dropping off. So this I mean this video was all right. I mean it wasn't one of my most favorited videos, but oh well, you're gonna have that. But say if you do have a a, a dip like a, an extreme dip, you can go to that point in the video. And see that and see what you did in that video that's going to cause your viewers to skip it off of it. And that's, I mean, this feature here is so important for what you're going to do on YouTube. Now, I've said it before. I'm not, I'm not a foremost expert on this. 
but I this is what I study to try to make my videos better for you guys because I see when when you when you guys don't like something and I try to to make it better just like my writing you know I, I look at something and you know say hey what can I do to make this better that for this video sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but the Huffy it worked even though it was my most hated video it you know it's one of my more successful videos but reviews get views so I imagine a lot of those views are from people that aren't subscribed let's go to one of my first videos we can go there if I can figure out how to do this uh. We'll just do my. Now, this one was a terrible video. My camera angle was all jacked up. So, it only has a 30.5%. I was trying to, so here we have an extreme dip. So right there, of course, it's looking up at the sky. You're gonna have more people dropping off. I probably wasn't talking during it. So this helps out dramatically uh, with with how and how you're gonna you know make your your videos better. I hope this that helps you guys out a little bit. We'll go back to the whole ch the channel as a whole because I was getting into that topic a little bit. So here we go. Good night, Sam. Sorry. Yeah, early videos are always going to be, be terrible, no matter what <laughs> what, you, what you do. So, have a good night, Henry. I'm not going to be too much longer anyway, so appreciate you guys stopping by and checking it out. So, we will go for... So let me change this here. Last year. So my analytics for the last year, you can see what my top my top video is. Of course, it was the introduction video, like I was telling you that that's my trailer video, and that's the one that was being displayed to pretty much everybody. So from from Google Ads, the vinyl wrapping, the bike frame, I I knew that one. That was one of my first video ideas, and I kind of kept that under wraps until I had more subscribers that was I I had that idea pretty much day one and then of course the fork review so you're gonna see with the click-through rate here how it's steadily you know going up that's what you want to see so out of almost 200,000 impressions I have almost 33,000 watch minutes from it. And YouTube's actually recommending my content pretty pretty well. I I would like to see, you know, how that compares to when I was st first started cuz I don't I don't remember <laughs> because I I really didn't follow this when I first started. When I first really started following this was right I want to say right around oh the Jan mid January time frame, actually no, mid late December time frame, is when I really started learning the analytics. The average view duration of my videos is kind of short right now for over the year because YouTube was pushing that that minute long video so it is going to be my my 
view, my average view duration is probably a lot worse than your guy, you guys are. Because you guys probably have a lot longer videos. And that's another thing. When you, when I try to do 10, 15 minute videos like Seth, like Alex. But they have the viewership to stay and watch those videos. When I realized that and people were dropping off at around that six to eight minute mark, I started shortening up my videos to around five minutes. So you'll notice my past, I don't wanna, I, I forget how many videos, but my, my most more recent videos try to stay under the 10 minute mark. And that's all because when you're newer, people are gonna mainly watch your videos that are shorter. So that way they can get on to the next person. And when you have shorter videos, people are more likely to stay on your channel to watch more videos, especially if they like you. And hopefully you guys like me. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So I hope this is a little bit helpful. Your ADD doesn't allow you to finish those videos. I'm going to go back and read the comments because I was looking at the other screens. <laughs> Your radio DJ in Tulsa. Yeah, sh sh yeah, like bike trails and greenway says i mean shorter videos are the way to go um i i really i'm gonna try to stick to that format this one this review was a little bit longer of a video i actually didn't want want it to be as long as it was but i just started writing and i had that long of a video so and i have i mean i'm sure i'm sure you guys have you know hundreds of hours of a video like I do it's it's actually I I like to go back now now that I have so much footage and actually throw it in into you know other videos and 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 I you can tell that's what Seth does now too you saw my my ad on Casey Neistat's channel. That's pretty impressive. Actually, well, that must have been more at the beginning before I started targeting it. That's kind of interesting. I'm glad to hear that though. He has pretty good followers, you know, following. <laughs> well, thanks, Ken. I appreciate that. I'm you know I'm try I'm trying to teach you guys some some stuff of what I've learned. Hopefully, hopefully it helps you guys out. It, it, it is hard to do this. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. So, I mean, don't, some people just do grow over, overnight. It, um, but it's rare. It's not. So. I'm not sure how to say your name. I hop poet. I hop poet. I hop poet. YouTube charges when your ad is basically viewed the whole way through. So if someone usually clicks off your ad, they they don't charge you. But when I started targeting mountain biking videos, um, I don't I don't know if my I want to see if I my Google Ads because if my Google Ads account is still open, I can probably show you. I'll just do ten more minutes and then we'll call it a night. Let me get logged into Google Ads here. I 
don't know if my account's still act active or not since I pulled the ad. If it is, it may still show what. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down here. Now, hopefully, you guys see that. Oh, I enjoy it, Drew enthused. But I'm just saying the I I love editing and stuff. It's just hard to make it work when you have a you know a family and you're trying to just basically you know run that and then everything else. So my campaign. So the way Google charges you, you basically pick how much you want to spend a day. And there is really no limit to that. So when I first started the ad, I did a dollar a day. Very, very basic. I figured, hey, you know, it's probably not, not going to work. I'll try it out. You know, it's a dollar a day. Then, you know, I started seeing, hey, it is working. You know, people are actually liking what, what I have. Yeah, I'm not really seeing... there's a whole basically it would show you like when it shows you when your ad played and how many impressions it got as you can see here you know your de your demographics and I actually targeted my ad from 25 to six the 64 age range um, I tried to stay out of that 18 to 24 age range just because I know those kids are going to be more into, you know, the jumping, the, you know, dirt jumping lifestyle. Basically, everything that mountain bike companies want to see. <laughs> but I kind of want to break the mold of what a mountain biker is. Not everybody can just go and do jumps and do everything else they want to do. That's just not the way pe people are. I mean most of us are so I kinda wanted to let me see if because it's not running it it might not show me it but it showed me all the all the videos that my my ad played on and who, who knows they might have changed the the site since then then yeah it's kind of boring so I'm gonna get off of that and another thing that before my time's up here go get to buddy for your your Google Chrome um, there, it's a Google Chrome plugin. It tells you everything you want to know. TubeBuddy and uh, VidIQ. Those are two tools that are a must because you can actually go. Let me pull up Seth's channel here. And we'll just pull up Crashing Dad here. Dr. Davis, telephone, please, Dr. And of course, it's having me log in with my video. So VidIQ or t and TubeBuddy, they're, they're both going to put these things. I'm not going to log into my VidIQ one. Cause... But it's going to tell you analytics of the channel itself. Like if it was shared in Reddit, um, the tags so tags tags aren't as important at least I think they're not um, I but I, I've done a pretty good job of actually I think the title is more important than the tags yeah B is for Bill <laughs> 
Yeah, th- th- he's one of my favorite guys in the Goon Squad. I've been watching Goon Squad since the beginning, basically. I'm I'm big in the cars too. <laughs> um, Vid IQ is an- another good one. That Vid- Vid IQ, they'll it'll tell you like how many subscribers a day someone's getting. Um, and as you can see here, like in the comment section, you can actually see how many subscribers each each person has. So that, like, say if you didn't know who Paul the Punter was, you could see, hey man, he has thirty nine thousand subscribers. I, I might need to check them out. And and same way with you know, Matt with Sh- Shut Up and Ride, you know he has twenty nine hundred. Oh, I need to go check him out, which is another thing. If you haven't checked him out, he's hilarious. Basically talks to himself the entire time. Um, but you can actually, that's a good idea how you can find more channels and see what they're doing. But I would always recommend, you know, come up with your own style. Don't try to copy somebody. I try not to copy somebody. You're always going to try to copy somebody, though, so... But vidIQ is another good one. This is a. I've never signed in with vidIQ on this computer because, like I said, my 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 editing computer's down, so that's why nothing set up on this one. <laughs> while we were having a little bit of problems at first. But those are two, two great tools, and you're you're right, little North Shore Sh- Shredder. I'm glad you could join me. Hope your dinner was good. Who does who doesn't like you, Drew? <laughs> Matt? <laughs> I think Matt just has a dry sense of humor. Another thing, I try to con- like all you guys that comment on my videos and everything. I try to remember little things about everybody that comments because like I said, they're taking the time to comment on your video. You might as well learn about them and what, you know, why you're, I mean, little North shore shredder. I mean, they're awesome on Instagram. I suck at Instagram. I suck at Facebook too. <laughs> so you gotta, um, you really do have to kind of grow your other, social media social so yeah here we go with the stuttering social media avenues as well while you're doing the the youtube thing yeah i'd really like to ride with matt (laughs) he's a funny guy (laughs) (laughs) i found matt from um no front breaks channel He's another guy that re- kind of really inspired me as well because of his story. Thanks, Jim. I, I really try to. And like I, I try to uh, kind of you know, remember a little bit about each person. Um, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Absolutely terrible with names for some reason. So I actually have a list. I know that sounds kind of, kind of psychotic. But <laughs> I try to keep a list of people that com- comment stuff and try to rem- remember things about them because you know it, it it makes it a little bit more personable. I don't do. <laughs> I try Twitter. I really try hard with it, but it just doesn't work out. So, I mean, I'm gonna start wrapping up here hopefully you guys found a little bit of interest in the stream um i know it was there was a few little hitches and stuff hopefully i'll do it again sometime and (laughs) what's twitter (laughs) basically everything i i let i let instagram post to my twitter i don't i don't do anything with with Instagram. (laughs) It's not about my channel. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you guys could join me. 
thanks so much. Um, hopefully the channel gets better. And you guys have a wonderful night. And remember, it's not about the lemons life gives you. It's about the lemonade that you make with it. Thanks.